Cambridge and we had a choice of going north or south. Well, we're going to the south end of the bay. It's supposed to be nice. It's nice now. So we're going to go take advantage of the weather. Launch on the Continental Shelf, come into the bay, and continue pretty much, I hope, without stop to the entrance to the top of the bay. We're, we're actually doing the physical oceanographic part of what's called a biocomplexity cruise. How complex is life uh, at, at the microbial scale, starting way out in the ocean and coming all the way into the um, Chesapeake Bay? The boat is only one-third of, of the action. It's the crew will make the boat. Skimmer. What's up? Well, I got the night owl off the port side here. All right. He's gaining on us. He's probably making about eight. I'm only making right. six. It's yeah. a friendly boat. It's all right. We can still come out. We know how to work with it. <laughs> the crew's been wonderful. It will determine how much science you can do. It's no longer a CBJ buoy. You know, like... We're the physical oceanographic component. Why you need us is because we find out what the structure of the, of the, of the, the water is like. You have a two-layer estuarine system where the fresh water is going seaward over high salinity water going landward. Light water moving seaward over salt water coming from the ocean light water being fresh water from the rivers and that change between the fresher water and the salty water occurs fairly rapidly on a very strong interface we call the picnicline. And we're dragging this scanfish, toad flying wing, up and down in the water column to be able to track that as we go. This happens to be a flying wing, computer controlled. It would measure temperature, salinity, oxygen, all kinds of wonderful things. We actually have found out that if we towed an undulating vehicle, we call it, and we measure on the fly, we can measure about a hundred times greater resolution, and we can do it faster by moving continuously. We don't stop the vessel, we just keep going. Oh, that's great, look at that. Beautiful dive. The plan is to go out on the continental shelf, launch the scanfish, and tow it all the way back to the head of the bay, about 350 kilometers. To have this thing towed along at six knots and the pitch, the roll is kept plus or minus one degree. It's unbelievable, beautiful. It's a flying wing that flies up and down in a zigzag pattern. Because it's down below the wave zone, even though we're towing on it occasionally, to have it perform that smoothly is really remarkable. If you look at the, the bay, you notice that uh, the bay, that it shoals near the Rappahannock River, the, the famous Rappahannock Shoals. That change, that transition south of the Potomac to the Rappahannock Shoals has a profound influence, we now realize, in the last three years on the exchange of salt and fish and phytoplankton nutrients. There's a sort of boundary there, what we call hydraulic controls. South of the Potomac, the bottom shoals fairly rapidly to the depths of the Rappahannock Shoals, and that's about maybe 30% of the water column, 40% of the water column. And what happens is the seaward flowing water um, meets uh, the water coming from, from the ocean, the saltier water, and they start 
interfering with each other. It's not a room, not a room, not enough room to go unimpeded. And so there's an adjustment internally, we call it a hydraulic adjustment, and a strong convergence, uh, relative convergence of water at the surface, which can bring um, uh, food such as plankton for other fish, for the larger fish together, and actually bring them down. It's a convergence that leads to subduction. We can bring warmer water, oxygenated water in the summertime, and high chlorophyll water down to mid-depth over a fairly large range. We're looking at the, these, these structures that we create what we call hydraulic controls. We had to survey through here, and I think we were lucky that we had the scanfish first to start looking at this. We saw enough evidence there. We saw for the first slice through there, said, aha, something's going on there. This is the first time anybody has seen a hydraulic control in partially mixed estuaries. It, it acts like a sort of internal sluice gate, a valve. So we think it's very important as a regulator, not of just of the salt in the upper bay, but also a local ecosystem that is important to the biology.